Welcome back to the build. Uh, we're still building this elevated concrete porch and deck. We've got the spray foam in all the holes. About, I'm about to shave that off, smooth that up a little bit. That's to keep the concrete from seeping down in underneath. Uh, and then today we're gonna start building the forms around the perimeter for the pour stop. So we'll put a couple pieces of two by up against this fascia board and then build off of that. Probably a two by 10, come up to here. Slab depth is going to be five inches. These are three inch tall ribs, so we'll be two inches above the top of the tall ribs, five inches above the bottom of the uh, short ribs. Be right about there. So we're going to do the forms today and maybe set the wire mesh and then just wait till we have a day where we know we can pour short days this time of year. So we want to pour as early in the day as we can when it's still not too cold but we have the whole day so we can work the concrete. Fingers crossed everything works out. So I'm gonna start trimming this off and uh, I got some guys coming to help me do the forms and they're actually gonna help me pour and finish the concrete. So here we go. Okay, we got the ends of the metal buzzed off, perfectly straight. Now they're building the form for the pour stop. And we're gonna do about a three quarter inch drop from back to front, so it'll drain. We're gonna do a one inch drop on the deck um, because it's not gonna be covered by a porch roof, so. and I'll rub the edges and make them look right. right. How far are we doing the expansion gap, the joints crack? I'll figure that out. I mean, but I do you finish that or do you just cut it? I usually cut them. But I, mean, want, I mean, if you want me to cut them in by with the groover, I will. Whatever works, whatever, I, I just was curious, like, is there a finished band around the edge or how do you finish finish it? Like a broom well, finish. Well, I, I don't put the band around the edge. I just broom it. Just broom it off. Yeah. Okay. I mean, and then just cut the groove. Yeah, and groove, cut the groove. Okay. You know, some people put a hand groove in it. You know, like right. a sidewall. Right. To me, that's too big. Yeah, I don't want to do Especially that. Especially on a pool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're not putting mesh in the concrete, right? We decided. Oh that's no 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 uh fiber fiber no I wouldn't do okay. that. Okay. Okay.
10 days of below freezing temperatures at night. We won't be pouring concrete for a little while. And it's going to snow tomorrow. So, getting ready. Blue Dock Sling, huge back saver. Here's the front porch forms. Came out dead straight. I'm really happy with that. That's what keeps the concrete from flowing and just falling off the pan. Alright, there's been a couple of questions in the comments section from people that uh, have never seen this type of construction before. A couple people were like, never seen this type of deck pan thing, and I don't understand how that actually becomes concrete. So, I, I guess I didn't really explain that too much. So, this pan, this composite deck pan, it's made for concrete. It's composite because it has little ribs and divots in it that hold the concrete as it's curing uh, and once it's cured it becomes a composite part of the entire structure. Once the concrete is actually cured this deck pan really doesn't serve structural purpose or it doesn't need to because the concrete should be able to support itself uh, given that it's the right compressive strength and has a rebar in it and all that. You could, uh, you could theoretically take away the metal pan once it's cured and the concrete would support itself. But it's called composite deck pan because it becomes a part of the concrete. Uh, right now it acts as a form. Um, the ribs are designed to give it strength and reduce the amount of concrete you have to use to get that strength. So that's why uh, the, the, some ribs are tall and some ribs are short. And it gives you that uh, strength over a span. Another question was how do you Keep the con How are you going to pour concrete on this without it just falling off? Well, that is this. The um, reason we did fascia boards the whole way around was two purposes. One was to serve as a uh, sort of a place to anchor our form boards. This prevents the concrete from just falling off the end. And it gives us uh, a three inch overhang uh, because we don't want the end of this deck pan really too close to the edge of the concrete. If it ever does rust, it'll seep out and you'll be able to see it on the face of the concrete. So we're going to pour a five inch slab here and we would have little rust marks that look like that if, we, if our uh, metal was right up against the edge. So we have that three inch overlap. The other reason we have that three inch overlap is to allow us to have a drip edge and then we can put our stone underneath uh, over top of the um, cinder block pillars here and it's all like staggered so that you have your drip edge and all that it just works out we had a little challenge here because when I put these um, fascia boards on that span lumber is lumber it was kind of wavy I got as much of the wave out as I could but then we came back and these guys shimmed it where they needed to and uh, put some furring strips in and got this laser straight right on this line it's perfect. So if we hadn't have done that, the edge of our porch would have been as wavy as the, the form board. But now the actual concrete will be perfectly straight. And even if there is a little wee bit of wave in the form board, they'll be able to take that out when they stucco it. Because that's what's going to happen. Our stucco over it, that'll be a nice finished piece. So we still have the deck side to finish forming. We got the front porch done and the back porch done. The last question I had was, how do you keep the concrete from going underneath the ribs? Well, the answer to that is spray foam. They make a piece that goes on the end called an end cap that keeps the concrete from flowing through these top ribs. I couldn't get it, uh, and it's a little expensive compared to spray foam, which I already had a half a case of, so I just filled it with spray foam. And uh, it's perfectly strong enough to hold concrete back. 
as much as we're going to do. So that worked out pretty good. So far, so good. Another question was, I hope you built a slope into that so the water drains off. Well, we did build a little bit of slope in. It was probably about a quarter inch from the house to the end. Uh, but when we pour the concrete, we've actually made the forms so that we can pull it this way. And we're gonna do probably a three quarter to one inch fall from the house to the end so water can drain off this way. We don't want water going that way toward the house. So yes, we did think of that. On the corners, it kind of goes like that, but you won't be able to see it because it's such a span of 42, 52 feet. You won't be able to see any kind of wave or hump once they're done. Uh, these guys are real good. They've been doing this 30 some years. One guy's built tons of houses. Other guy's done concrete. They build chicken houses. They, they do all kinds of stuff. And from what I've seen so far, I'm very happy with their work. Uh, 51 inches. 51, 51. Right. All of them said 51 or, or 52. 52. Those were 52. This was 51. Yeah, we're an inch short. I don't know what we're going to do Something about happens. that inch. Tear it all down. We're going to start all over. <laughs> but that's pretty good to be exact about. I know. Especially coming around like this right here. All right, need 51, right? 51, 51. Yesterday we got between four and six inches of snow. Today it's about melted off. This will be actually the first big snow we've gotten since we put this house together. So it's starting to melt off. So one thing I noticed was that roof shed the uh, snow pretty well. That those steel shingles and it dumped straight down onto the deck so we just want to make sure when we build these porch roofs that they are sturdy obviously enough to take a full load of snow from up there down onto the roof so that that can drain off but the deck pan held up perfectly well certainly hope so because it's got to hold concrete a little bit of snow shouldn't bother it at all but you can see this big pile right here that came straight off the roof so of course, as soon as we get the forms, it snows, fills the whole thing up with snow. <laughs> That's our, seems to be our luck lately, but doesn't look bad back here, on the deck side. Pretty windy today. I just came up to see where we're at. We will not be able to pour concrete for at least 10 days. The forecast has got freezing temperatures every night for the next 10 days. So we need at least 72 hours without freezing temperatures in order to pour concrete so it can, you know, cure at least to the point that it's uh, structurally good. Yesterday this was very white. <laughs> Melted off real fast. Underneath the deck side, 
no water at all. Oh, there's a little tiny bit. <laughs> if that's all we get, I will take it. Looking good.